Hey there, welcome back to another tutorial. Last time we created a basic welcome page with buttons that lead us to pages for creating or joining a poll. Today we'll commence working on reaching out to our API to create the poll and then storing this poll in the application state, which we sort of initialized last time. As a reminder, you can go to my GitHub Jacob S. N. Goodwin slash ranker course repository and follow the instructions to get started. If you want to just follow along from today, you would check out the branch for uh, lesson or tutorial number 17 here, and you'll be up to date with the code that we have. So I've run npm run start at the root of our repository, and I'll temporarily close this little window. And I want to remind you what we have. If we go to localhost 8080, we have two buttons right now to create a poll or join an existing poll. If we click either of these, you'll see that there's just a little title or the start of the form saying enter a poll topic, but we don't actually have any form there. So the first thing I want to do is create some state and some text fields to enter the name of the poll, to set the maximum number of votes per participant in the poll, and then also for the person to give their name. Let's start by adding some state for these fields in our create page. So we kind of have a source folder with some more UI components and then our top level screens or pages are here. So let's go to create.typescript or TSX. And then we're gonna reformat this to not directly return JSX, but we'll put a little return statement here. And then I guess I probably need one more bracket or brace there, and I'll let the auto formatter deal with this. And we're going to add some use state or react state here for the poll topic, the maximum number of votes per participant, and for the participant's name. I'm not going to add any huge state management for this, but just some local state. And let's import use state from React. Let's update that import. So the poll topic will be initialized to an empty string. The max votes per participant will be the number three initially, and their name will be an empty string. We're going to add some text inputs for the name and the poll topic, but I actually have a small component for the votes, and that component is actually going to be in UI, and it's called the count selector. Now recall that we can take a look at these in Storybook, so I'm going to open up a new terminal. I wonder, oh, all my problems are that I'm not using any of these variables. That's good, okay. And so let's run npm run storybook at the root of the repo. And once this opens up, I'll show you what that count selector component looks like. Now we didn't set up storybook in this. This was just part of the repo that I initialized. So let's go to count selector. And so you see you provide it an initial value so I could make it two. I'd probably have to refresh there. Yeah, now the initial value is two. You can set a minimum and max value. So if I hit minus and I get to zero, zero is the min value, so you can't go beyond that. And you can increase to five. And each time you change the number, you see that it emits a, an event, you might call it, or a function is called with the new value. So if I hit this, it'll be emitted with four. So let's now add this component, or first let's add a little bit of an input for the poll topic. And what I want to do actually around this H3 is I want to add a div with a margin bottom of 12. And then I want to put this H3 in there. And then underneath this, I want a full width div with centered text that will hold our input. And so this div just has an input. The max length is 100. And when we set up our backend application, this was actually our defined maximum length for the poll topic. And then when this field changes, we're going to set the poll topic with the events target value using this setter. We're not actually going to use sort of what you might call two-way binding in other frameworks. We're going to actually just use this poll topic to submit the post request to our API. Beneath this div, let's add the count selector I just showed you, and let's import that. So we'll import that from components UI count selector. 
And these are those properties that it had, and you can go ahead and look at the component in more details if you want, and when it changes, we'll set max votes to the value. And that value is emitted in the onChange function, or callback, or event, or whatever you want to call it. And notice that I set a little wrapper, and then we also ha added another little h3 tag as a title in the form. Lastly, beneath this div, I want to create another div with some margin at the bottom. I think this is where it goes. We'll see. Uh, I have a lot of nested divs here, but this will have a margin bottom 12. Underneath it, we'll have a little title that says enter your name. And then underneath that, we'll do the input. The name's maximum length is 25 characters. And we'll use the set name from use state to set the user's name when that's done. So lastly, I want to add a button to submit this data or to start over, meaning to like go back to the home page, basically like a go back button at the bottom. And I want to add it beneath this uh, div here with the margin bottom 12. So it looks like that div is probably this one. And beneath that, we'll just add another flex column or with flex direction of column with the items centered across the height and also across the width. And the first button will say create pull, right? Here's the text. And right now we're just going to console.log create pull. And then the start over will do similarly where we'll console log starting over when we click it. So let's save this and see our current progress. So here is our page and I'm going to open up the React dev tools by going to components here. I recommend you install them and I'm going to click on the create page. And I think I promised to make the font bigger <laughs> last time and I almost forgot. So that seems to be not that big, but better. So let's enter a poll topic and see if we see that change in our state. The poll topic is simply why. And then we can change the votes per voter. You see those changing here. And then you can enter a name, Billy. And if we click create, we should see the console logging this. And this warning, unfortunately, is from the animation library. I guess it needs an update. So if I click create, you see create poll. And if I click start over, it shows starting over. And we'll handle these events properly soon enough. Before continuing on to actually submit this form data when they click this create button, let's add a very basic validator. Let's go up here to just beneath our use states and we'll say our fields valid. If the poll topic is less than one or greater than 100, it's not valid. And if the max votes per voter is less than one or greater than five, it's invalid. Although we limit that via our count selector component. So that should not happen from the client's point of view. And if the name is less than one or greater than 25, it's invalid. And we're just going to put that on the disabled property of this button. So if the fields are not valid, so if not our fields valid, then this button is disabled. Let's go back to create poll and you see this is grayed out and unclickable until we have some poll topic and name and now you can click it. The next thing that we will want to do is wire up this start over button so that it will take us back to the initial landing or start page. So the simplest thing to do would be to use one of the actions in our state, the only one we have right now, and call set page with the name of the welcome page, with at page.welcome, because this is an enumeration. However, later on, we're going to be adding a start over functionality that resets some other portions of the state. So I want to actually add a new action called start over. And so start over is actually just going to call this own actions.set page with the welcome page. And later on, we will have some more functionality in this method. Then we can go back to create and in this button, we can call actions.start over and we need to import that from the state. And I don't know why I accidentally hit enter and there we go. So let's go and check that this works. So let's click create poll and start over. There we go. It takes us back to the home page. Very nice. So in order to actually submit or create the poll, we're going to be making a REST API request to our server. Now, most of the functionality is going to be via WebSockets, but when we either create or join a poll initially, we will submit a REST request. 
in order to facilitate that, I have this api.typescript file. And in here, I have a function called make request, and it receives a generic T. And that's just to help you if you want to type the response that it receives. The base API, UP, uh, the base API URL is taken from an environment variable called Vite API host. And those are stored in the .env file. And that API is going to be localhost port 3000. That's where our Nest.js server is running. And later on, we'll use this namespace for the namespace of the socket IO room. Or I should say the server, the room is something else. So this function takes the endpoint after the base API. And then reckonit is actually just a type from fetch. Go ahead and click into that if you want to see it. But basically, I'm allowing us to add properties from standard old fetch. And so we'll fetch the base API URL, which has the API base host and the port here. This formatting is a little weird, actually. I should probably change that. But it's just the host colon and then the port. So we reach out to that with co cores and content type application JSON, and then we merge any other sort of fetch request properties that we want into this fetch. And then we get the JSON, and if the JSON response is not okay, we will return no data and then the error as an API error. Now, what's an API error? I just define this as possibly having an array of messages and a status code. And the reason I use an array of messages is for how Nest.js is sending back validation errors. So that's just how we're going to define this. If the response is OK, we'll return it as a type T. So that's just so you can tell your API what you expect the payload to be. And if there's an error, if it's an instance of an actual error, like your standard JavaScript exception, we're just going to sort of, if the environment is development, we're going to actually return the whole message to us so that we know what the actual problem is. But for other clients, if you're actually like in production mode, we'll return an unknown error. Now, if the error is not some instance of error, it's some other actually unknown error, we'll return the messages of unknown error and then return an empty data object with an error. Now, if everything is successful, the error will be undefined, as you can see here, and we just return the data. So basically, we get an object back that either has data or an error. So back in create.tsx, let's add a method to handle creating a poll. And this is going to be pretty big. <laughs> so uh, brace yourself. We'll add it beneath our fields valid. And so what this is going to do is call a yet undefined start loading. So for this application, we could have lots of loaders. And this is kind of like the eternal debate in UI stuff. Like, do I have a global loader? Do I have individual loaders for components that are lazily loaded? For this simple application, we're just going to kind of show a loader or spinner. It's not a spinner in this case. It's little dots when any function needs to be loading. So we'll just put little transparent semi-transparent backdrop with little loaders when there's any application loading state we'll tell our api errors that they don't exist so set api error i believe is something that we'll need to define here in the state and then we'll await make request that function i just showed you so let's import it from api and the poll type if you remember is in the shared folder we're kind of sharing the shape of the data of the poll in this shared workspace. And so this poll type will come from here, this poll. So we need to import that. We're almost there. If there's any error, I just want to log it for development purposes. So if there's an error and it's a 400 code, we know it's a validation error, and I'm just going to put a general message saying that both the name and poll topic are both required. We will not make it any more granular than that. If it's some other error, we'll get the first message in the errors array. And otherwise, we'll actually get the data off of the poll, and we'll call this initialize poll action. We'll end up setting a poll access token, and then we will send the user to a new page called the waiting room, which we haven't created yet. 
finally, no matter what the case is, we will stop loading. So let's first add some local state for that API error, this one here that I mentioned. So let's go up to the top with our other states and we'll add a use state of a string. This is probably unnecessary because of type inference, so let's get rid of that. And it still knows that API error is a string. Then we're going to actually show this API error if it exists. So if we end up setting the API error, we need to display it somewhere. And we'll add it after you enter the name, I think beneath this div here. So if there's an API error, we'll just show some centered red text with the actual text of that error. All right, there's still some problems here. We need to add some new actions and some new state to be able to support initializing the poll and also setting the new waiting room page and the loader. So there's a bit to do. So we're now going to actually add these new actions and pieces of poll state to store the data from the poll and the access token. Before doing that, let's just go to Postman really quick and just to show you what the data looks like that's returned by the API. So if you submit to the slash polls endpoint with the topic votes per voter and name, you see that you get back a poll that has an ID, it has the topic, votes per voter. The participants aren't filled until we connect via WebSockets, so don't worry about that. And it comes back with an access token. So these are the pieces of data that we're using here, and we've yet to add this app page waiting room. So let's go to our poll state. We need to add a couple of types to our actual app state here. So the first is we'll add an is loading boolean. Then we'll add a poll which will be initially undefined. So that's why I have a question mark here is that I allow this field to be undefined. And we import the poll from shared poll types. And then the access token is just a string. Broken. That's kind of cool. I don't know what a troken is. Sounds like some sort of hobbit creature or something. Now for the initial state, we have the current page, but I also want to set an initial is loading state to false. Now we may set this to true later, or I may set a separate state for when the app is initializing, which basically just means we check if there's a token and we kind of reload the user's poll if they accidentally navigate away in their browser or something. So this is invalid because access token is mixing, missing. And so this just needs a question mark. The access token will also initially be undefined. And so now this initial state is valid. So beneath start over, let's add our new actions. So one is to start loading. Very simple. We'll set state is loading to true. Stop loading. We'll set state is loading to false. To initialize the poll, we'll have a method that actually receives the poll. And then we set state.poll. And we do a very similar thing for the access token. Now there's one more thing we need to do. If we go to create.typescript, you can see there's still an error that there's no app page dot waiting room. And in fact, we need to import app page. We'll do that after we add waiting room to our app page types. And I accidentally went to poll types here, go to state. And then at the top, you see we have this enum with our various pages. So we'll just add the welcome page. Now, if we go back to create, we just need to import this app page from state. Let me open my terminal to see if we have any other problems. Okay, well, we're not using handle create poll yet, and we'll wire that up shortly. All right, we just have a couple more things to do here. So we need to pass this handle create poll to our create button. So let's scroll down. And we'll replace actually this on click with handle create poll. Now we're not going to be pushed to a new page so far because we have yet to create a, an actual waiting room page. So we'll just kind of create a dummy page and we'll call it waiting room.tsx. So we'll import React, and then we'll just have a little page with an H3 saying waiting room, 
in kind of one of our standard layouts, which is a flex div with the flex direction being column. We also need to go to our actual setup of pages, meaning the pages.tsx file. And in here, we need to actually add another config for welcome. So now that our little route config knows to show and transition that page and when that's our current page. Remember that our page is taken from the state. Let's also add a little loader since remember we're setting some sort of loading state. And we'll do that actually in the app.tsx. I may come back and add some loading in this pages component, but for now let's go to app. This app component needs to be refactored a bit. Right now it's showing pages, but we're going to have a little conditional statement based on the current state that will show a loader or it will show all of the pages. Well, in fact, it will show the loader and the pages because the loader will be displayed on top of the pages. So I'm just going to copy and paste over this app. So first we get the state from our state, which is already imported, and we have to use the current state snapshot. So let's import that from Valtio or even from Valtio React, I guess. And then this loader is actually just a component in our components UI folder right here. And if we go back to Storybook and click on the loader, you see it's just a loader that looks like this. And you can set it to a few different colors, orange or blue. And I guess you can set its width too. So let's import this loader from Components UI Loader. And let's check out what we've got. And there seems to be an issue using Valtio React, so I'll just use Valtio in this import of you snapshot. All right, let's see what happens here. Let's maybe open up the network tab to see our request going out. Let's clear some of these. There's a lot of junk there. So the poll topic is why, and my name is Jacob, and let's create this. And in fact, before we do that, oh, maybe I'll slow down. There is a setting that you can use here to throttle. So I'm going to put this as slow 3G, and the reason I'm going to do that is so you can see that little loader with a backdrop pop up. Okay, caught myself there. There's the loader. And the page flashes, and I don't know why it's not showing anything, so let's investigate that. But before we do, let's just see our poll, which is returned here with an access token, and the topic of why, and votes per voter of three. Now, if we go to, remember we can go to Redux, and we can see our current state. The current page is waiting room. So why there is nothing showing here is a good question. So if we go to our actual React components, you can see there's no page yet showing. So maybe this is just a matter of like restarting our whole app. And here's the reason. In my route config, you guys probably saw this. I did app page dot welcome when this should be waiting room. So no wonder it did not register the new waiting room. Let's import that component and I'll stop being a bozo. Let's create the poll. Oh, look, there it already showed up. All right, so let's create the poll again. Why? And we'll say my name is Jacob. Slow 3G and waiting room. Okay, everything works. Next time we'll add the join poll component for someone to join an existing poll. See y'all then.